In the world of American automotive history, there are fast cars, there are rare cars, and then there's the A.C. Shelby Cobra 427 Super Snake. Born in an era when American muscle ruled the roads, this beast wasn't just ahead of the curve. It redefined the whole damn geometry. Let's set the scene. It's the mid-1960s, and the American automotive industry is right in the midst of a golden age. Muscle cars are roaring off production lines, each one trying to outdo the last in terms of power and performance. Mustangs are galloping off assembly lines, Camaros are flexing their metal muscles, and Chargers are electrifying the streets. But in a small workshop in California, one man is cooking up something that will make these beasts look like lap dogs. This man is Carroll Shelby. Shelby, a former race car driver turned automotive designer, had a vision of creating the fastest, most powerful sports car in the world. In the early 1960s, after a successful career as a race car driver, Shelby wanted to build a sports car that could dominate the racetracks. His vision was to combine a lightweight European chassis with a powerful American V8 engine. At the time, AC Cars, a small British manufacturer, was producing the AC Ace, a lightweight roadster with a solid reputation in Europe. However, the Ace was in need of a new engine supplier, as the inline-six engine it was using was being discontinued. Shelby saw an opportunity in the AC Ace. He approached AC cars with the idea of fitting their lightweight Ace chassis with a Ford V8 engine. AC cars was intrigued by the idea and agreed to supply Shelby with the chassis, which would be modified to accommodate the larger and more powerful engine. Shelby then turned to Ford, convincing them to provide the engines for his project. Ford, eager to take on Chevrolet's Corvette in the American market, agreed to supply the small block V8 engines that Shelby needed. With a chassis from AC and the engines from Ford, Shelby was able to create the Shelby Cobra, a car that would go on to become one of the most famous sports cars in automotive history. This simple relationship marked the start of a revolutionary moment in the American automotive industry. This very relationship would later result in the rarest American sports car ever produced. The original Cobra was a ferocious machine powered by a Ford V8 engine that turned heads and smoked tires wherever it went. But as impressive as the early Cobras were, Shelby wasn't satisfied. He wanted more power, more speed, and more dominance on the track. This led to the creation of the Cobra 427, which housed a monstrous 7.0-liter Ford 427 V8 engine capable of producing around 425 horsepower, though some say it was closer to 500. The Cobra 427 was designed to be an all-out assault on anything that dared to line up against it, whether on the road or the track. But even the Cobra 427 wasn't extreme enough for Shelby. He had a penchant for pushing the limits, and this drive led to the creation of something even more outrageous. Shelby wanted something built for one purpose, to be the ultimate street-legal race car, something to embody everything Shelby stood for, speed, power, and a touch of insanity. Something he named the Cobra 427 Super Snake. The first step in creating the Super Snake was selecting the right foundation. Shelby chose to base his new creation on the Cobra 427 competition chassis. This wasn't your average sports car chassis. It was a purpose-built racing frame designed to handle enormous power and the stresses of high-speed racing. The 427 competition chassis was a marvel of engineering in its own right. It featured a sturdy ladder frame made of 4-inch steel tubing, significantly stronger than the standard road-going Cobra chassis. 
This robust foundation was crucial as it would need to handle the immense power Shelby had in mind for the Super Snake. The chassis also incorporated advanced racing features like all-around independent suspension with coil springs, telescopic shock absorbers, and anti-roll bars. These components were carefully tuned to provide the optimal balance of handling and stability, essential for a car with such extreme performance capabilities. Now, it is important to mention that the 427 competition was a pure race car, not street legal in any sense. To create the Super Snake, Shelby and his team had to adapt this track beast for road use. This wasn't as simple as slapping on some headlights and calling it a day. The team added a full windshield, replacing the small racing screen. They installed mufflers to tame the engine's roar to street legal levels, although tame might be a generous term here. Bumpers were added along with other road-going necessities like turn signals and a horn. But make no mistake, even with all of these additions, this was no comfortable cruiser. The Super Snake retained much of the Spartan, purpose-built interior of its racing sibling. The goal wasn't luxury, it was to create the most visceral driving experience possible while still being technically street legal. Next, we come to the piece de resistance, the engine. The standard 427 Cobra was already a powerhouse, but Shelby added something truly special in mind for the Super Snake. The base was Ford's 427 cubic inch 7.0 liter V8 engine. This big block monster was already a legend in its own right, known for its immense power potential. But for Shelby, Potential wasn't enough. He wanted to push this engine to its absolute limits. The first step was to enhance the engine's internals. The team installed forged pistons, a high-performance camshaft, and strengthened connecting rods. The cylinder heads were ported and polished to improve airflow, and a high-flow oil system was added to keep everything lubricated under extreme conditions. But the real magic came with the addition of forced induction. Shelby didn't just add one supercharger, he added two. Twin Paxton superchargers were bolted onto the big Ford V8, force-feeding it air to produce truly astronomical power figures. The result of all this engineering wizardry? An engine that produced a whopping 800 horsepower and 462 pounds per foot of torque. In an era when many sports cars were struggling to break the 300 horsepower barrier, the Super Snake was putting out numbers that would make modern supercars blush. Shelby himself described it best when he said, When I built this dual supercharged 427 Cobra in 1966, I wanted it to be the fastest, meanest car on the road. And boy, did he succeed. The Super Snake wasn't just fast for its time, it was in a league of its own. With such immense power on tap, the Super Snake needed a transmission and drivetrain that could handle it. Interestingly, Shelby chose to equip the car with a three-speed automatic transmission rather than a manual. This might seem counterintuitive for a performance car, but there was a method to his madness. The automatic transmission was more durable and could handle the engine's massive torque output better than the manual alternatives available at the time. It also made the car slightly more manageable to drive, although manageable is a relative term when you're dealing with 800 horsepower. The rear axle was a heavy-duty unit necessary to cope with the engine's prodigious torque. A limited slip differential helped put the power down to the road, although with this much power on tap, traction was always going to be a challenge. On the outside, while the Super Snake retained the basic shape of the Cobra, several modifications were made to accommodate its new power plant and improve its aerodynamics. The hood was enlarged and featured a massive scoop to feed air to the twin superchargers. The nose opening was widened to improve airflow to the radiator, crucial for keeping the engine cool under the extreme stress it would be under. 
Wider fenders were installed to accommodate larger wheels and tires, which were necessary to put all that power to the ground. The windshield was slightly larger than on the standard Cobra, improving visibility for street use. Despite these changes, the Super Snake retained the Cobra's iconic silhouette. Low, wide, and undeniably aggressive. This was a car that looked fast standing still, a visual promise of the performance that lay beneath its curvaceous aluminum body. Inside the Super Snake was all business. This wasn't a luxury grand tour, it was a street legal race car and the interior reflected that purpose. The dashboard was simple and functional, with a large tachometer front and center, a clear indication of the car's performance focus. A wood-rimmed steering wheel, a Shelby trademark, was the driver's primary interface with the car. The seats were rudimentary by modern standards, offering basic support but little in the way of comfort. But comfort wasn't the point. This was a car designed for the thrill of pure, unadulterated speed. Now, you might be wondering, what makes this car so special? Well, buckle up, because we're about to dive into the details that make the Super Snake not just rare, but truly one of a kind. First off, let's talk about exclusivity. When we say the Super Snake is rare, we mean rare. Only two were ever produced. That's right, just two. In a world where even limited edition supercars often see production runs in the hundreds, the Super Snake stands apart as a true automotive unicorn. But rarity alone doesn't make a legend. With all this power, one might think that the Super Snake would be a handful to drive. And you'd be right. In fact, the car's ferocious nature led to one of the most infamous stories in automotive history. One of the two Super Snakes was sold to comedian Bill Cosby. Legend has it that Cosby drove the car once and promptly returned it, terrified by its power. The car then found its way to a new owner, Tony Maxey. Tragically, Maxey lost control of the Super Snake while driving along the Pacific Coast Highway. The car plunged off a cliff into the ocean, taking its driver with it and reducing the total number of Super Snakes in existence to just one. The surviving Super Snake, the one Shelby kept for himself, has become one of the most valuable cars in the world. In 2021, it sold at auction for a staggering $5.5 million. But even this astronomical price tag doesn't fully capture the car's significance. You see, the Super Snake represents more than just a powerful engine and a lightweight body. It's a symbol of an era when American automakers were pushing the boundaries of what was possible. It's a testament to the vision and audacity of Carroll Shelby, a man who wasn't content with fast enough and always strove for faster than anything else on the road. In many ways, the Super Snake was ahead of its time. Its power output wouldn't be commonplace in production cars for decades. Even today, a car with 800 horsepower is considered exceptional. The fact that Shelby achieved this in 1966 is nothing short of remarkable. As we look back on the AC Shelby Cobra 427 Super Snake, we're not just seeing a car. We're witnessing a pivotal moment in automotive history, a time when the dreams of engineers and the skills of craftsmen came together to create something truly extraordinary. The Super Snake may be the rarest sports car America ever produced, but its impact on the automotive world is immeasurable. It stands as a high watermark of American performance engineering, a reminder of what's possible when visionaries are given free reign to pursue their wildest automotive dreams. In the end, the AC Shelby Cobra 427 Super Snake is more than just a rare car. It's a legend, a myth made of metal, rubber, and gasoline. It's a testament to an era of automotive history that will never be repeated, but will always be remembered.